So hello there everyone. Good morning. In today's vlog, matututunan natin or makikilala natin ang iba't ibang national artists. Today's lesson is all about the order of the national artists. So by the way, I'll be giving you a little bit of background kung kailan nga ba ito nagsimula at kung paano ito sinimulan at kung paano namimili ng national artists. So now, the Republic of the Philippines through the National Commission for Culture and the Arts or which we call the NCCA and the Cultural Center of the Philippines which we call the CCP established. So sila nagsimula nito. The Order of the National Artists Award. Ito ay sinimulan noong April 27, 1972 and in Tagalog we call it or in Filipino we call it as the Orden ng Pambansang Alagad ng Sinig under the proclamation number 1001 Okay So this award seek to give honor to the Filipino individuals Wow With outstanding share and the cultural heritage and cultural identity of the country. Ibig sabihin, yung may mga naiambag at nagbigay ng magandang impact or malaking impact sa Philippine cultural heritage and cultural identity ng ating bansa. And they give their efforts and contribution to the country. By means of the arts, by sharing their arts, specifically in the areas of visual arts, dance, music, architecture, design, allied arts, broadcast, film, theater, and literature. Okay, so hindi lang pala basta-basta pumipili ng mga national artists. Siyempre, kailangan may naiiwang impact or may naiambag sa cultural heritage and arts ng Pilipinas. Kaya naman, saludo tayo sa ating mga national artists. At maya-maya lamang makikilala natin ang iba't ibang national artists sa iba't ibang uh, larangan ng arts dito sa Pilipinas. So I know you are all excited. This is Teacher Neric Rivera or Sir Neric Rivera saying love, peace, and serenity. Come on, let's learn about the national artists of the Philippines. Now let us start with Antonio R. Buenaventura. Antonio Buenaventura together with Francisca Reyes Aquino, national artist for dance, researched on the popularized Philippine folk songs and dance in 1935. He wrote songs and musical arrangement based on folk songs of different ethnic groups in the country. Included in his works are several marches in symphonic and orchestral musical composition. His notable marches include History of the Fantasy, Triumphal March, Echoes of the Past, Second Symphony E Plot, Ode to Freedom, Echoes from the Philippines. Buenaventura was also the conductor of the Philippine Army Band that brought back the band prestige as one of the world's best military bands. With his lead, the Philippine Army Band was tagged as the only band that can sound like a symphony and orchestra. Once again, Antonio R. Buenaventura. Now let's welcome Jose Maceda. Jose Maceda's lifelong musical career focused on understanding and popularizing Filipino traditional music. He conducted researches and field works on traditional music, which resulted in his wide array of recorded music from different parts of the country. His papers led to the understanding and appreciation of the ethnic traditional music of the Philippines locally and internationally. Apart from conducting researches, he also wrote some compositions inspired by traditional music. His major works include Ugma Ugma, Pagsamba, Udlot Udlot, Kubing, Agugan, Ugnayan, Aroding, Ading, Aroding Ading, Siasid, and Suling Suling. Now let's welcome Lucrecia R. Kisilag. She reinforces the Filipinos' appreciation to music by fusing Western influences to Philippine ethnic music. She integrated ethnic instruments in her orchestral productions like Tukata for percussions and winds, divertisement, and concrete Filipiziana de Propindis and Misong Filipino. 
Her other works includes Legend of the Sarimanok and Philippine Scenes. Here are her other works. Her son, Ang Pamana Jose, Sisa, Awit na Mga Awit, Psalms, Fantasy on A, Four Note, Theme and East Meets Jazz Ethica. Also, Casilag was the music director for the Bayanihan Dance Company. Together with other artists, she made the group one of the finest cultural dance group in the Philippines. Once again, Lucrecia Artesina. Another national artist icon, Ernani J. Cuenco. He is one of the remarkable singer, composer, film scorer, and musician in his time. Many of his songs etched a mark in the hearts of the Filipinos due to his style of incorporating condiment elements in his ballad love song. Many of his works served as the theme songs and musical scores for numerous Filipino movies that led to his fame. Some of his popular works include Bato sa Buhangin, Bulong ng Puso, Kalesa, Gano kita kamahal, deligin mo ng hamog ang uhaw na lupa. And Nahan, kahit na magtiis, Cuenco collaborated with Levi Celerio, other national artists for music and composing, and adding lyrics to the most of his musical composition used in the films. Before entering the movie world, Cuenco was a cellist for five years in the Manila Symphony Orchestra and a soloist for two years in Manila Chamber of Orchestra. He was also a professor in the University of Santo Tomas. Once again, Hernani J. Cuenco. Now let's welcome Lucio San Pedro. Lucio San Pedro is a master composer known for creatively using folk idioms in his musical compositions. Unlike other artists, he did not incorporate folk song materials in his works. Instead, he extracted the Filipino essence and style from the folk materials and used them in his compositions. His music has this effect of bringing a sense of identity of the Filipinos. He produced numbers of works like songs, orchestral compositions, chamber music, and cantatas. Some of his famous songs include Sa Ugoy ng Duyan, Lulay, choral compositions includes Eastern Cantata Sa Mahal Kong Bayan, orchestral works includes The Devil Bridge, Malakas at Maganda, Overture, Hope and Ambition, and band musical composition include Dance of Fairies and Lahing Kayumanggi. Moreover, Maestro Lucio San Pedro was the conductor of three bands namely Pengkong Grand Manson Band, the San Pedro Band of Angono, and Banda Angono Numero Uno. Once again, our national artist for music, Lucio San Pedro. Now let's welcome Antonio J. Molina. Antonio Molina's notable contribution to the Philippine music is his use of folk music in his works. He innovated the Philippine music in his time by using folk instruments like the kulintangan and gabang. He composed more than 300 works and two-thirds of which used traditional music. His works involve orchestral music like Ang Batingao, Choral Symphony, Kundiman Kundangan, The Living World, Chamber Music like Hating Gabu, String Quartet, Kung Sa Iyong Gunita, It is keyboard music like Malik Mata, We Were Moonlight, Dancing Fool, Vocal Music like Amihan, Awit Ni Maria Clara, and Larawan Itong Pilipinas. Among others, Molina came from a family of a musician who influenced him to play different instruments. His brother founded the orchestra Molina with 22 musicians who studied music for free in the Molina's residence. The said band was disbanded in the Spanish period. Molina studied law at the University of Santo Tomas and Manila Law School but later on stopped because of his because of his father's illness. He then established the Rondalia ideal and continued with his musical career until it flourished. He became known as the last musical triumvirate along with two other musicians, Nicanor Abelardo and Francisco Santiago, who set the bar of folk who set the bar of folk music once again another icon national artist for music antonio molina 
Now let's welcome Francisco Feliciano. He was a musician, composer, teacher, and conductor known for incorporating Asianness in his music. His works show the rich culture and ethnicity of Asia, especially the Philippines. This world-renowned artist created unique musical works by transforming our indigenous music to a level equal to the music of the Western countries. In his choral piece, he used musical lines from ethnic songs, resulting to the enthusiastic harmony of sound and culture. His operas and orchestral works, on the other hand, has unique musical language, carrying contemporary style that uses model scales. His major works include Sihay sa Kabila ng Paalam, La Loba Negra, Pokpok Alimako, Pamagun, Yerma, and the Ashen Wings. Once again, always remember that Francisco Feliciano is always incorporating Asianess. That's the big word, Asianess. Once again, another icon for national artists for music, Francisco Feliciano. Now let's welcome one of my favorite icons and the national artist for music, Levi Salerio. Levi Salerio started playing the violin when he was 11 years old. Due to his extraordinary talent in music, Alex Underlipai of the University of the Philippines Conservatory of Music recommended him at the Academy of Music Manila for a scholarship. However, Salerio had an accident resulting to a broken wrist which stopped him from playing the violin. But this accident did not stop him from continuing a career in music. He became a lyricist and wrote a wide range of songs of the different themes. He composed an estimate of 4,000 musical works. Some of his famous works are Sa Ugay ng Duyan dahil sa isang bulaklak saan ka man naroroon, Ang Pipit kung tayo magtanim, Kalesa at marami pang iba. He was also the lyricist of the famous Christmas songs, Ang Pasko ay Sumapit. Celerio also became known for writing songs for a Filipino movie. He collaborated with other national artists like Lucio San Pedro and Hernani Cuenco. Moreover, Levi Celerio was the national artist known for making music using a leaf. He was included in the Guinness Book of World Records for such talent. Salerio was a great musician who deserved a great honor for enriching the Philippine music. Once again, my favorite, and I think our favorite, the lip musician and the most known national artist, Lebi Salerio. introduce you to Ramon Santos. Ramon Santos music highlights Asia's and Philippine rich artistic tradition and features elements from Western and non-Western areas. He combined Philippine indigenous instruments and vocals to orchestral instruments and other instruments from foreign nations like the Japanese gamelan. He is also composed works that interweave Asian culture, drama, poetry, and dance like his Saliwaan, Taragang Magayon, Tao, Awitipula, at marami pang iba. Moreover, included in his popular unique compositions is the Hulintang. It is a piece for solo piano which resembles the sounds of Kulintang, a musical instrument from Mindanao. Santos promoted the Philippine music to other nations through his cultural education programs. 
he organized an international festival for Rondalia and Forum for traditional music attended by composers. Once again, Ramon Santos. Now let's welcome Jovita Fuentes. Jovita Fuentes was a remarkable Filipino artist known for her portrayal of Shoshu San in Madame Butterfly by Gio Tedetrio Mopuccini, which was held in Teatro Municipale de Pienza in Italy, Spain. Spain awarded her as the Embajadora de Filipinas as su madre patria for outstandingly portraying different roles in numerous performances in Europe. It has to be noted that at the time, Filipinas are rarely heard in Europe. But Hubita made the country proud for her exceptional voice and performances. Fuentes was also the founder of the Artist Guild of the Philippines, which periodically produced the tour of Opera Land Production, which promoted opera in the Philippines. She is also supported other musical organizations which kept Philippine music alive. Also, Hobita was an educator of music at the University of the Philippines, Conservatory of Music, Santa Isabel College, and College of Holy Spirit. Once again, our very own Hobita Puentes. Now let's welcome Felipe Padilla de Leon. Felipe Padilla de Leon is a people's musician. For the sentiments and aspirations of the Filipino people in times of war, and of these are evident in his musical works. The musical artist before him inspired de Leon to create a Filipinized version of Western music. Some of his orchestral music includes Mariang Makiling, Overture, and Roca and Cantata. His symphonic works includes Manila Overture and Orchestra, while his choral music and songs includes Payapang Daigdig, Ako Ay Pilipino, Bulaklak, and Mutya ng Lahi. Once again, Felipe Padilla de Leon. Last but definitely not the least, I welcome you with Andrea Veneracion. Andrea Veneracion played a significant part in the development of the Philippine choral music. She was the founder of the world-renowned choral group, the Philippine Magical Singers, which has won numerous awards in and outside the country. The Madrigals contributed in the development of choral literature and movement throughout the Philippines. Penarasyon also conducted cultural outreach program providing music education in several areas in the country. Once again, our music icon, national artist for music, Andrea Veneracion. 